Car Obsession is proudly supported by Carly and Draggy. Check out the video description to find out the latest discount codes. Hello guys, welcome back to Car Obsession and welcome to another walk around. If you are new to my channel, firstly, thank you for joining me, my name's Aaron. And secondly, my walk around videos are pretty much a static review of the car. Therefore, if you're looking for driving content that won't come in this video, but will come in future videos. So be sure to subscribe and to click the bell. Anyway, plug over onto this week's car, which is the very potent, very green Ford Focus ST. So as always, I will take you around the car, talk you through the specification and give you my first impression. So yes, this is the brand new facelifted version of the fourth generation Ford Focus ST. The main talking point for the outside is of course the new front end, which in my opinion looks so much better compared to the pre-facelift. It's sharper, sleeker, more aggressive, and I think it's more cohesive with the rest of the design. I personally think that the pre-facelift, the front end, looked a little bit frumpy and a little bit out of proportion. But yes, the, the new car, the facelift, I think looks a lot sharper and of course for the facelift you now get the optional mean green paintwork which will cost you 825 pounds and i think it looks absolutely fantastic the mean green paintwork is complemented by 19 inch alloys which have an anthracite finish to them and interestingly they are not wrapped with michelin pilot sport four tires no instead ford for this car has chosen a uh, chosen sorry chosen Pirelli P0s, which, um, yeah, I am a little bit surprised by. Personally, I would have preferred Michelin's, but that's merely my humble opinion, or perhaps uh, a set of Goodyear Eagle F1s. The P0s do work well, but in the UK, the temperature is falling. We're now approaching, well, we're pretty much in autumn, and I have found the P0s haven't quite performed as well as they would do when it is a, a nice hot day and the roads are a bit stickier. But anyway, enough about the, t the tyres. The rest of the design language is as it was. So, yeah, if you liked the rest of the uh, pre-facelift Focus ST, you'll like this car. Of course, you get a nice chunky roof spoiler and a fruity double exhaust. If I come down here, you can kind of see it in the, uh, in the shadows. And overall, I think this is a good looking car. And I do really really like the mean green paintwork. As I mentioned, it is an option and it will cost you £825. Now, on the topic of price, this is a little bit of a tricky one to speak about because I do love a fast Ford, but I hope you're sat down for this. This car in front of us, okay, it has got a few options, including the paint, as I've mentioned, but this car in front of me is almost, are you ready for this? £39,000. Now, I'm sorry, Fast Fords over the years have been working class heroes. The, you know, the, the, the performance car for your average Joe, they can drive it to the office and blast it down the B road on their way home. And don't get me wrong, I know, car, I know brand new cars are going up. In fact, everything is going up. But I just find it difficult to swallow the price of this car. Now, without options, you're looking a little under £36,000 and even that is far from a bargain and in comparison if you were to get uh, a Hyundai i30m which doesn't really come with options apart from the paint and comes with a five-year warranty which extends to track usage the i30m give or take roughly speaking is about £1,500 cheaper and that's a fair wedge of money when you bear in mind that with the i30m like I say you kind of get everything as standard you can't really pick options as such but anyway that's um that's my kind of mini rant about the price over um let me take you on to the inside actually no let me focus on what is under the bonnet hey focus nice pun just realized the bonnet release is on the passenger side i always do that with this car always going to the wrong side the spec sheet is there we will we will go through that in a little bit Right, let me lift up the lovely green bonnet and show you what is lurking underneath. So, as with the pre-facelift, it is a 2.3-litre turbocharged four-cylinder petrol, which kicks out 280 horsepower, along with 420 newton metres with overboost. So, the power and the torque has not changed 
with this car but in all honesty it didn't really need a hike in power because the pre-facelift offered plenty of it so yes there we go in this car it is mated to a six-speed manual gearbox and of course power is fed to the front wheels you do have an, an electronically controlled differential to help to put the uh, that brutal power down onto the tarmac now if you prefer you can have this in an automatic but really and truly guys i think a car like this you have to select the manual particularly when you consider the manual change in this is fantastic not quite the best i've ever had in a hot hatch but it's certainly up there now onto the interior and there's some rather large changes in here the first of which as you will quickly see are the front sport seats so previously Ford would have used Recaro but no uh, Ford Performance is now making their seats in-house and as I've said on social media and in some other, some previous videos I'm not a massive fan of the design granted the lighting is a bit poor so I may have to dub in a bit of b-roll footage here but yeah the integrated headrests of, of which you can, can't really see them too well. They just look really ugly and cumbersome. As I've said previously, the integrated headrest kind of reminds me of Jabba the Hutt's head. It's just a bit ungainly. The rest of the seat though, looks absolutely fantastic. And credit where credit's due, to sit in, they are really, really good. So as a seat, they, they perform their job very well, which is the most important thing. One thing I will say, and a fellow YouTuber and good friend Pocket Rockets said the same thing when he was in this car yesterday, is that the hip bolsters, they are quite pronounced. Um, so getting in and out of the car is a little bit tricky. It's not the most dignified. So if you're perhaps an old person or you find it difficult to get in and out of cars, you may find this to be a little bit of a barrier, quite literally. So bear that in mind. So if you are thinking about buying this car, maybe pop down to your local dealership, have a sit in it and make sure you're happy with it before you commit to it. The other change, let me just take you off my mini tripod and just pop my tripod somewhere. Just pop it there. The other change is the tech. Look at that, guys. If I turn on the ignition. Oh, uh, yeah, you get a, I think it's 13.2 inches, if I'm not mistaken. Let me just consult the spec sheet. Yes, it is. Yeah, a 13.2 inch touchscreen with Ford's new Sync 4 system. Um, and it is really nice to look at and it's very easy to use. Sadly, Ford has fallen into the trap of other manufacturers and putting all the uh, climate control um, controls within the touchscreen, which I'm not a massive fan of, but it is easier to use on the move in this car compared to other cars uh, I've driven. Uh, say at I'm looking at you. So yes, um, the advantage of that is down here is a very clean, minimalistic look. You've got very little down here. You've got the uh, volume control, uh, ESC off, well you can see the buttons here, you don't need me to explain them, but if you're wondering what the, that P is, that's the park assist, and of course you've got the uh, lovely black and red power start stop button. Yes, very nice indeed. So yeah, the touchscreen works very well. If I have time today, I may even film a separate video dedicated to the infotainment system, but I'm not going to commit to that just in case I don't have time. And you also get a uh, digital driver's display as well. So you've got a choice of driving modes actually. So on the steering wheel, you can either hit S to go straight into sport mode. That's a nice handy shortcut. Or if you go to mode, go to the touch screen and you see you've got a choice of four. You've got slippery, normal, sport or racetrack. And I really like the little animations um, that come with them. So you've got slippery, which I would argue in a car like this is pretty pointless, but you get some rain, there we go. And uh, for normal, you get a little city. It's pretty cool. And for sport, you get kind of like a, a cog um, of some description. And for racetrack, you get uh, a little image of, uh, look at that, it's Laguna Seca. Um, interestingly, with this being a European product, I'm surprised they didn't put a little uh, animation of the Nürburgring, but maybe that was a bit too fiddly to, um, to animate because it's quite a large track. Anyway, moving on. Now, whilst I'm on the topic of the racetrack mode, that doesn't come as standard. That comes as part of the uh, performance pack, which is, uh, I will just consult the spec sheet, an £800 option. As well as having the racetrack mode, you also get um, adaptive dampers as well. But sadly, Ford hasn't put an individual mode into the drive um, 
settings, which is a little bit disappointing because when you put the car into race track mode or sport mode, the, the ride is quite firm and jiggly. Not quite as bad as the N mode in the i30M, but not too far behind. But at least with the i30N, you have a custom mode, whereas in this you don't. And I think that is a bit of an oversight from the Ford performance team. Maybe on the Mark V Focus ST, if we get that, they may do that. But yes, the touchscreen works wonderfully well. Um, I've had no issues with it. And um, yeah, it is a very good system. Um, as you may see, you do get heated seats as standard. And I believe, yeah, I've also got a heated steering wheel as well, dual zone climate control. Uh, I've mentioned the park assist. Uh, I've got LED lights and I do have plenty of different options. I will just toggle through the touchscreen a little bit so you can get to see it. I'll just turn off the radio in case. Oh, hang on. <laughs> I thought the radio was on, but there's, there's two women speaking uh, outside the car. Um, I did wonder why I was turning that down and nothing was happening. <laughs> Silly me. But yeah, um, just to kind of play about with the settings. It's a nice slick system. It's got a nice clarity to it. Okay, the reversing camera isn't the sharpest, but it's not the worst that I've ever seen in a car. But there we go. As you can see, you've got front and rear parking sensors as well. Um, you've got the B&O sound system just there. I think that is an optional extra. No, no, it isn't. And we do get a head-up display, which is currently in its little cubby hole. That's also an option, that, and that is £400. Uh, this has the driver assist pack, which actually I can read it off the spec sheet for you. So you've got the uh, driver, uh, driver assist pack, which gives you driver alert, traffic sign recognition, adaptive cruise control, auto high beam um, and that's 500 pounds parking pack also the active park assist is actually optional i do apologize i thought that was um that was standard so door edge protectors so if i just quickly pop out the car you will see you have these little protectors that come out look at that Woo. Uh, ford have been using these for a few years and they're quite handy although you could easily live without it in my opinion Right, let me just park my bottom once more. Um, and you get the rear wide view camera, but I'm pretty sure you do get the reversing camera as standard, but I may need to correct myself with the subtitles. So as you can see, according to this spec sheet, this car should be £37,735, but this spec sheet is actually out of date. I was given an updated one by Ford, and like I say, it was almost £39,000. Such a lot of money for Ford. Um, anyway, moving on. Onto practicality, the door bins, as you can see, are a good size. That is a one litre bottle and it fits in rather nicely. Of course, you've got two cup holders in the middle. And what I like about these is that these are adjustable. So you can custom, you know, you can kind of have custom settings depending on the size of the cup or indeed the bottle. Or, or you could just use it as a general cubby hole and you can even slide that across to make the inside look a little bit cleaner. So if you've got rubbish in there and you don't want it to be on, be on show, when you have uh, your friends in the car, you don't want to be embarrassed, you can just use that instead. So right, let me just sort that out. You do have a wireless phone charging pad, uh, as well as a 12 volt socket and two USB ports, one type C and the other type A or type B or whatever the, the older design is. You do have a little slot here where perhaps you can pop the key storage underneath the center armrest which by the way is adjustable you can slide it forwards and backwards to suit your needs little tray in there for perhaps some loose change or something a little bit of storage underneath um ford used to put a pen holder in there but that's gone not that i've never not that i've ever needed a pen holder in a car anyway but just an observation and the glove box offers a fairly decent size so i've got my sunglasses in there charging cable and a few other bits. One feature I do quite like, just being a little bit boring, is that on the centre console you do have some nice padding. So on a longer drive, you can rest your left leg on there, or the passenger can rest their right leg on there uh, to give you a bit of added comfort. That's a nice touch. Just shows that Ford is uh, putting that extra bit of uh, thought into the interior. Um, not too sure if I've mentioned it, but the front seats are electronically adjustable. 
and I, I, I know for a fact I mentioned they are heated, which on a day like today is quite nice because the uh, yeah the climate is starting to fall in the UK. Let me just pop that on the driver's seat. So let me move on to the rear. Let me turn off the ignition. There we go. So as always, the driver's seat has been set for me. I'm six foot two, so I am of course a taller chap. But even so, space in the back is pretty good. And what Ford has done, which is quite clever, is that they've sculpted the seats in such a fashion that uh, it gives you a bit more room for your legs and for your knees. So let me just close the door like so. So as you can see, knee room is pretty good. And if I bring you down here, you'll see the leg room isn't too bad either. It is good. Headroom is also pretty respectable. I've got dark hair and you've got a dark headlining, so you can't really see it too well. But if I do that, hopefully that will give you some idea of the headroom. As I've mentioned, I'm six foot two. So if you are taller, let's say if you're six foot four, it may be a bit of a squeeze, but not too bad. Now with this being a medium sized hatchback, I think you will struggle to fit three adults in the rear. But of course, if you're more concerned about carrying children, this is a focus after all. So it, it almost goes without saying, but you do get Isofix points. In regard to practicality, the door bins are of good size. In fact, let me just nab my 500 mil bottle like so that fits in just nicely and in fact i reckon that one liter bottle may fit in there as well you do have map pockets in the back of the front seats you don't get any storage down here which is perhaps a bit disappointing but as you can hopefully see if i bring you down here you will see you do have two usb ports again a type c and a type a or b whichever the older one is i should really, should really know that but um i don't off the top of my head just zoom you guys out you do get an armrest for added comfort for those longer journeys as well as two cup holders and you even get a feed through hatch so if you want to load longer items such as skis or items or items of wood or whatever you want to load that is long then you can do so that is a nice handy feature and last but not least you do get a hook either side so in case you want to hang up an item of clothing or some something you can do so Right, um, one thing I will say, as you can see, the interior is quite dark and you've got the dark headlining. Having said that, the back of the Focus ST isn't quite as dingy as I may have imagined. Uh, it's not exactly screaming with light and uh, I think a pan... Uh, oh, I'm out, out of focus, there we go. Um, out of focus, in a focus. Um, I think a pano roof would probably do this car the world of good, uh, but overall it's not too bad in the back. It's not too dark or dingy uh, moving things on to the boot step into the nice autumnal breeze it's a very mild day in the uk it's lovely you can tell i'm british because i'm uh, always talking about the weather so the boot remains unchanged for the facelift so if i lift up the tailgate as always, the boot is filled with my filming crap, but I will cut to a clip where the boot is a little bit emptier. Um, yes, the boot capacity is unchanged, and that means you get 375 litres, which isn't the biggest in class, but it is competitive. Of course, if you want more space, you can, of course, fold down the 60-40 rear seats to um, yep, give you more luggage capacity. That's all pretty straightforward give you one more walk around the Focus ST and I think this is a really fantastic looking car. If you have any questions or queries then please drop them in the comments section below. This isn't my car, this has been uh, loaned out to me by Ford UK for the week. Um, so yes, I'll have this for a few days and then it will go on to someone else to uh, drive, review and to have fun with. But yes, it's here for a good time, not for a long time. Yes, a very smart looking hot hatch, very good looking hot hatch. So yes, I think my time is up. If you have enjoyed this video or found it useful, be sure to like, comment and subscribe. If you are subscribed, don't forget to click the bell icon so you get notified every time I make a video. But until the next time guys, be sure to keep up the car obsession.